ladies and gents, welcome to TFI, and in this video we're going to be finally looking at iMates. Going to take a very quick and basic overview of iMates, one of the most requested things for the channel that I've just never got around to doing. What is an iMate? An iMate is a pre-configured constraint. That's the whole point of an iMate. It's if you're placing the same part into an assembly over and over and over and over and over again, and you're having to create the same constraints over and over and over and over again with the same parts, then you can pre-create an iMate and it'll always match up the parts together based on a pre-created constraint. So say for example, right, this part here is a PCB board carrier, right? So this, you slide a PCB board into these two holes here, and then you put two little plastic clips on the end of this tray, and then it clips the PCB board into this holder but the clips are the same, the carrier is the same. You have to recreate the same constraints over and over and over again. So what I've done is pre-created iMates onto this tray. So when I place the end clips in, right, it's the same end clips over and over again, right, carrier end piece, right, left and right. As soon as I place it in, boom, it just clips itself right onto the end of the tray because there's a pre-created constraint in the parts and then you place it at all matching eye mates and inventor goes and scans the rest of the model to see if there's any other matching eye mates there isn't so it just creates the one and then i do it again for the other end piece there we go and then that's the two placed on the left and right hand side i haven't had to create any constraints myself at all they were all ready done right so how do you do these how do you do these it's pretty simple it's pretty simple right i've got a base plate here which is just a it's just a plate it's just an extruded rectangle with a whole bunch of uh, extruded holes in right so i'll just do a little circle there extruded it through by what by mill or something and then patterned it around Something like that, if you want to recreate it yourself, it's just like 9 by 9, 50 by 50, something like that. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, by working on the same principle as the original example I used, I've got this little, I don't know why I've called it a joint. It isn't a joint. It's just a little tube type thingy. But that fits perfectly into this hole here. But I don't want to have to constrain it every time. Every time I put these two parts into an assembly, I don't want to have to recreate the same constraint over again. How would you do it? Well, what you do is you go to the Manage tab in the part, and then you go to iMate. And then you get the Constraint dialog box. That's what it is. It's essentially the Constraint dialog box with only one half, the first selection. So the first selection is going to be... Uh, this face here, I want this face here. It's basically, I'm, I'm matching up, I'm mating that face to that face. So because I can't create the full constraint, I'm only creating half of it in this part here. And then you give it a name, and this bit's really important. The name of the con of the name of the eye mate has to be consistent. You have to remember what it is, and it has to be the exact same name. It, it doesn't ha it doesn't have to be, but it massively helps if the eye mate name is the same as the one it has to match up with. So I can call this iMate base plate uh, mate, something like that. And then you can configure the constraint or the iMate to have similar settings to what you would have in a regular constraint. So you can have like motion, uh, offsets, that kind of thing. You can change it from a mate to a flush. And then also I said it, it helps it does help if the constraint has the same name as the other iMate. But if you don't, then you can tell it to match up with a I mate of a different name, so maybe this is going to be you no know, top plate mate. You also want this I mate to match up with a, another I mate with that name. You can put that into the matching list there. All right, then you just click OK. What that does is in your browser it creates an I mates folder called base plate mate, and then you get your little I I mate glyph. The little I mate symbol appears where the I mate is over there, and that's your I mate there. Uh, once you've created it, you can edit it just by right-clicking and editing it. And there you go. Usual things apply. Right-clicking and suppress it. You can, you know, delete it. All the usual stuff. All right. That's that's one half of the iMate done. At the moment, it's useless. At the moment, it won't work because we don't have the other half. So we need to go to the other part and create the other half of this iMate. And so you go manage iMate. So the other half is going to be this face, and then we're going to call this the same base plate mate okay so that's those two components now matching up when i place this part into an assembly with this part those two i mates will find out they've got the same name hurrah as all happy friendly those sing kumbaya run a campfire eat marshmallows they'll come together and then that constraint will be created in an assembly for you but that'll just match up the two faces. The part will still be free to slide around. So we need to match up the center lines. We need to we need to fix it in place with another eye mate. So I'm going to create another eye mate, and I'm going to call this uh, let's call this base plate 
the center line and let's pick the center line of the hole and then okay so that's the second i made created let's go to the other part and we'll go i made same again center line and we'll call this base plate cl read okay that's it done if i hit save and then go to base plate and hit save on that and then we'll make a new assembly i put these both into an assembly and i'll show you what happens base plate in first let's uh, place grounded at origin and then let's place in the second part lower joint and there you go it's matched up the first i made so what you do is you can say you can say okay just match up one i made but obviously you're going to want to match up all i mates that's kind of goes without saying you want all the matching i mates to match up the base plate and then the center line a better and an easier way of doing that though is if you know you've got two i mates which you want to match up to two i mates on another part these are always going to match up these two i mates here are part of the same assemblance if you know what i mean they, they are always going to be working together then you can convert them into what's called an i composite which is essentially an assembly of i mates so you just hold down control pick them both up these two are joined together right click on them and create a composite that's it and we can call this uh base plate comp I do. Right, so that's combined these two I mates into a composite. Do the same in the other part. Create a composite, and we'll call this base plate comp. And then save him, and then save him, and then back to the assembly. Now when I place the part in, it's now matched up the composite as opposed to individual I mates. So I don't get as many options for going to the next I mate. It was when we first did this, it was saying, well, okay, we've matched up one I made, but I, have no, I couldn't help but notice you have more I mates than that. Should we not move on to the next one? Well, now there's just a composite. It just matches it up. That's fine. Select, don't, don't, right, Autodesk. Autodesk, we need, we need to have a chat at this point. Autodesk, why at this point does okay mean cancel? <laughs> why? Why does okay mean cancel? So don't click okay. <laughs> don't click okay. What you do is you right click and you say generate Remaining iMate results or place it all matching iMates. It essentially does the same thing. And there you go. That's your component now placed into the assembly at the composite points. The composites have been matched together and it's now been placed into the hole matching the composite. So that hasn't saved any time really for this example. It would have been quicker to just place the part in and then constrain it together. But the whole point is if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, then this would save you a little bit of time. Right. The other thing to be aware of. I'm just going to delete this part out. Is when you're placing your uh, when you're placing your part in the assembly, is these two buttons down here at the bottom, right? You want to just we're going to ignore this one for the purposes of this video. We're going to mostly focus on this one here called interactively place with I mates. If that's not ticked, say ticked, it's difficult to tell whether it's actually selected or not selected. Uh, but if that one's not selected, it's going to ignore your I mates completely when you put that part into the assembly. But when that is clicked, when you click open. That's when it'll automatically scan the model for iMates and it'll place them straight away. And then just right click and then place at all matching iMates. And there you go. All right. If you're thinking to yourself, well, wouldn't it, why didn't you, why didn't you include the iMate in every single one of these holes? That would have been cool, man. Neil, that would have been really cool if you could have placed the iMate at all these holes. And when you placed it, it would have put one in every single one. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't pattern an iMate. You can't create an iMate and then include it in a pattern, all right? So if we try and do a rectangular pattern, features, you just, you just you just can't. You can't. You would have to manually create a new composite in every single one of these, which just wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense because what you can do is pattern that using a feature pattern. And then look at that. There you go. That's how you would do it. Use your iMate to put it in first time over. And then if you do want it to be placed into a pattern, just use a feature pattern. And then there you go. So that's an that's iMate. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can be more you can be more creative with the type of iMates that you create, but it's essentially the same, it's the same technique. It's exactly the same technique. Create an iMate, create the first half. It could be a mate, it could be a, an, an angular constraint, it could be a tangent insert constraint, exactly the same as if you were creating a normal assembly constraint. And then you can tell it if you want, if they have different names, you can tell this iMate to match up with another iMate of a different name. If you know that you're gonna match this up to another iMate that you've already created ages ago and renaming that other iMate would be too much hassle, 
Uh, it might break things. Well, then you can tell this one to match up with that one. It's pretty much it. I think for a basic beginner's introduction to iMates, that'll do. That will do. So thankfully, you can now stop harassing me to do tutorials on iMates. I've done it. <laughs> I've finally done it. Uh, that's all there is to it. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of padding time because I'm trying to think to myself, is there anything that I've missed? Is there anything else that I could probably mention here within the realms of a beginner's tutorial? But I don't think so. I don't think so. That's pretty much it. All right, that'll do then. That'll do. I'm going to knock it on the head there. Thank you very much. Uh, just as a side note before I, before I head off, their channel has been pretty quiet over the last couple of weeks, uh, mostly because my day job has been really busy. Like just ludicrously busy, so I've not had much time for YouTube, and uh, the channel is kind of slowing down as a result. But can't be helped. Can't be helped. Uh, at the moment, I still can't afford to take a day off work to focus on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, the Patreon hasn't gone uh, too well. <laughs> I'm being honest, it hasn't. But thank you to everyone that has contributed so far to the Patreon. But unfortunately, it just it just isn't gathering enough really for us to take a day off work uh, a month to uh, to to do any YouTube stuff. So. Uh, the channel's going to have to be quiet now when uh, work day job gets busy. That's just the way it is. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do a few more videos over the next week or so. But I don't know what they're going to be on yet. I don't know. Uh, I'm mostly doing vault stuff at the moment. But anyway, it's got nothing to do with this one. So I'm going to wrap it on the head there, man. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.